Welcome to the Menopause Unplugged podcast with me, your host, Nikki Oliveira. On this podcast, we will hear from women who are navigating the challenging and transformative journey of perimenopause and menopause. These women have graciously agreed to share their stories and insights, offering a raw and honest glimpse into what it's like to go through this major life transition. From hot flushes to rediscovering themselves, our guests will provide a wealth of knowledge and inspiration for anyone who's going through or will go through menopause. So grab a cup of tea, settle in and join us for a fascinating and enlightening discussion. Hello and welcome to the Menopause Unplugged podcast with me, your host, Nikki Oliveira. Today, I am super, super excited to have such a VIP guest with us, um, introducing Faye Tozer from Steps. Hi, Faye, how are you? Hi, I'm really good, and I'm really, really happy to be here and talking about this. Thank you so much. I know you've been so busy with your new musical, um, 42nd Street, which is obviously hitting theatres everywhere. Um, So super exciting. Um, I actually um seen Faye's interview on Loose Women um just towards the end of June there, um about um of course what's what's up and coming for Faye, but as well as her perimenopause journey. So today we're going to talk a little bit more about Faye's experience with perimenopause. So Faye, how did you first notice it? Okay, so I think that I've been having symptoms for a lot longer now I know what some of the symptoms are mm. but my uh, the crunch was really it was back at the end of last year and I'm just going to give you the gory version sure. but basically um after having um <laughs> some ragey moments and um some really really heightened uh, emotional moments um when it came to my menstrual cycle, I had two weeks of flooding. It wasn't bleeding, it was flooding. And um, somebody described it as gothic. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> and um, so I've been really lucky, you know, throughout my life, been very regular. Um, you know, I'm fairly fit, fairly healthy. Um, I have to be for my job and I choose to be um, because it makes me feel better. Um, and I don't really go to the doctors for anything um, unless it's like laryngitis or I don't yeah. know, something like that. Um, but um, this was really something that took me back um, and I really didn't know what was going on so much. But then I remembered a conversation that I'd had with my mother-in-law. My mother-in-law was um, a general nurse practitioner and but- she... Uh, <laughs> On one of our um, Sunday afternoon dinners um, where we had a couple of glasses of wine, she was saying, oh, you've got all this to look forward to. Oh, these can be the symptoms. If anything happens, come and see me and we'll just chat the whole thing through and I can tell you what's going on. Well, I remembered that conversation. I was like, oh, my goodness. OK, this is it. Here we go. It's the beginning of the end yeah. and not in a bad way. This is the beginning of the end of um, what my body is a female body for. Um, and it's going to be now um, a journey. Um, and it was, yeah, very draining. I was um, really, really um, fatigued. And I was um, suddenly not knowing what to do with myself. <laughs> yeah. And which I think so many women are, they're just like, it just hits you like a ton of bricks, doesn't it? And you're like, "Oh, what's going on?" So, what, what, and what individual symptoms then, Fee, did you have? Okay, so um, looking back, if I could rewind, and having hindsight is this wonderful thing. Um, I started, I think, in because I'm 47 now, so I started in my 40s. My eyesight started depleting a little bit. Mm-hmm. And I started getting blurry vision in the morning. It would take my eyes a lot longer to wake up. Um, and then I think um, more recently in the last couple of years, I've been getting sort of more joint pain yeah. and um, not like just going down to the gym and you think, oh, I've worked out really hard, you know, you feel it for a couple of days. It was actual joint pain. And I think this year more so things that wouldn't usually hurt, like my elbows or my shoulders mm. or 
Um, and I was, yeah, just really uncomfortable with that. Um, I also have noticed um, a change in my skin. Um, I'm suddenly getting um, weird dry patches and blotches and um, spots where I, I've been really lucky with my skin and I'm suddenly mm-hmm. getting spots. Um, yeah. Lovely things like hair loss, yeah. you know, the um, we're getting bolder patches now. So yeah. we're wearing yeah. fringe forward. <laughs> um, there are so many things. Um, uh, my diet, um, I have now got a wider midriff let's say you know and it's it's harder to pull it back in and my willpower I think as well to go down the gym Mm. whereas before I'd be like that right it's wobbling let's go sort that out and now I'm like I just can't be bothered yeah you know and it's trying to find that willpower because it's harder anyway um but yeah it's like What's more important at the moment, having a nice time and sitting and having a cup of tea or getting down the gym? Yeah. You know? And is it that just menopause fatigue that you're feeling that's stopping you? It's like a barrier, I, right? I mean, I think so, because now um, I have been to the doctors. Um, I don't know if you want to talk about this now, but I've been to the doctors. Um, <laughs> so when my symptoms came about, I had quite a few friends because I put something on my Insta stories mm-hmm. just saying about brain fog. And I had so many people go, oh, have you re- read um, Davina's book, uh, yeah. Menopausing? And I was like, no, what? Um, because it hadn't affected me. I didn't know that that was my conversation yet. And oh, my goodness, it's been my Bible for the last sort of six months. It really has. And the information that she puts in there of modern hormone replacement treatment yeah. um, where you can get your information when and what to say to your doctors it's just so valuable it's uh, incredible um so yeah i went down to the doctors um no i phoned the doctor because you can't get appointments all the time these days can you spoke to the doctor <laughs> um and named my symptoms, um, said that I was probably going to need, um, okay, bear with me, brave fog. Um, <laughs> so, okay. so, um, my fear was that I knew that I was going back to work in six months and the bleeding for me was uncontrollable. It mm. was, um, it would just happen without me knowing there was no regulation to it. And I was suddenly thinking, oh my God, I'm going to be caught out either on stage yeah or on tv and have a flood moment and I thought I can't do that I need to take control of that so um Nana had mentioned uh going and having um a progesterone um coil fitted um and even though that was a really uncomfortable moment for me and it took about three days to settle in settle in sort of physically it's not comfortable um it wasn't for me but the long term relief is definitely worth it so um i went and had that fitted mm-hmm. and then i went back to the doctors and then we spoke about estrogen yeah um, and so there were lots of different versions that you could choose from but again for my lifestyle and for my work um i chose the gel um yeah. i daily use a body lotion anyway so I've put that in as part of my routine. A lot of people like the patches. Mm-hmm. Um, the pill wasn't an option for me because of the higher risk of breast cancer um, and my mum having breast cancer. Um, so that was a clever one to like say, not that one for me. But yeah. actually, the gel is absolutely brilliant. So, yeah, I feel like I'm on the road to success. <laughs> that is so good. So did you have to change your preparation of hormone replacement therapy much to kind of get the dosage sort of right for you so I'm still in my early period of it so at the moment I'm just literally doing one pump Mm -hmm. um my symptoms have dulled massively so just for example I was getting my ragey moments Mm -hmm. (laughs) and it would be I can only describe it as um I felt like you know, when you're a new mum and you have just got all these heightened emotions and you just let it out. Yes. And I just, and I literally, I mean, I would scream and go, oh my God. 
that's not me. That's yeah. really not me. I don't, I mean, I shout, I can shout, definitely. Mm. But just the outbursts were just, um, <laughs> I shocked myself. Yeah. Um, and that happened quite a lot. Um, and since the, the, the estrogen, um, I, I don't think I've had such a ragey moment. Yeah. I have shouted, but kind of in a jokey way. <laughs> um, and kind of, yeah, it's like you have to laugh at yourself as well at the same time. Um, but I definitely think that my dosage at the moment is right for now. It's um, taken me back to feeling myself more again. So, yeah, I think at the moment. But also I found out that um, your symptoms can also fluctuate. So sometimes, um, you know, or, or they could increase. So I also want to leave myself a little bit of leeway to increase mm -hmm. that estrogen as well when I need it. Um, I'd spoken to my doctor and said, oh, I was feeling really emotional the other day and I did do an extra pump and she was like, that. no, 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 don't do that. Don't self-medicate. We need yeah. to keep it on. <laughs> so, yeah, so don't do that. No, 100%. I actually had a conversation in a forum just the other day about that. I said, do not up your dosage without speaking to your doctor first. You know, it's really, it can get really dangerous. Um, it's, it's, it's hormones at the end of the day, so we don't want to be... Mm -hmm self-medicating for sure so going back to the raging moments then Faye how did that affect your personal relationships then like with your husband and with so your um my husband and my son I've just got the one um I have been very very open about what's going on with me um and my son Benjamin he's 14 and probably doesn't want to hear what's going on, but I told him and actually he's um, taken it really, really well and in his stride. And when I come downstairs and go, right, mummy's having a mental moment, bear with, they've been like, okay, all right. Um, and my anxiety as well was a big thing. Mm. Um, um, I started getting butterflies for no reason, but like physical butterflies um, um, to the extent of how I would feel if I was in an audition situation. Wow. Um, and we were just going to go around to Nana's for Sunday lunch. And suddenly I was all, I was physically shaky and I didn't know what to do with myself. I had a bit of a hot flush. Mm. So I sat myself down and I was just like, guys, um, I don't know what to do with myself. And they obviously saw the panic in my face. Yeah. Um, that's not like me at all. I've never suffered from anxiety. Mm -hmm. um, and um, they were like, okay, we'll slow it down. And now we know what it is that's better and that's okay and so when I do have a ragey moment they kind of they forgive me or they understand that I don't mean to make to make me shout as loud as I do or yeah. be as impulsive or reactive um but I think communication is huge yeah um, but also don't let your partner blame other things on the menopause <laughs> don't let them throw them back in your face either <laughs> It's good that they, uh, they can understand it, but it's not everything. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. So in terms of your general lifestyle then, Faye, what adjustments have you had to make to your, like your nutrition and your exercise and so on? Okay, so um, I am still feeling less, uh, I, I don't want to get up and do exercise really, um, but I'm forcing myself to do it at the moment because I'm back into a show. Yeah. Um, you know, the fact that I've got the oestrogen and it's allowed me to lift the brain fog as well has really helped. But now I'm back in the show, you know, I've got costumes to get into that you'll see behind me. Yes. Um, <laughs> you know, I have to be active and I have to be on it. And I think it actually helps your brain to keep active. You know, I went back to um, a lot of my local classes. I've got an amazing um, friend, um, Tanya Walker. I'm going to give her a little shout out at Misfit Dance and Fitness. Um, I went back to do loads of classes with her. And actually, um, I started doing a step class again because mm. it helps engage your brain as well as um, walking. It's not high intensity. It's good for your joints. Right. Um, but actually having to learn things and, you know, get that all connected again and practice that was really good, and really fun as well. Yeah. Um, I have also um, really actively started doing a lot of yoga. Mm -hmm. um, I was invited to a yoga retreat with um, one of my beautiful best friends and 
getting into the zone, yeah. stretching out those muscles that help your back and your sciatica nerves and your hips and everything that's hurting, you know, all these lovely stretching and breathing and taking time out. Mm. Um, that's been a really, really helpful thing for me. Um, yeah. And walking, getting your watch on, doing your 10,000 steps, but making time for yourself. So maybe getting up a little bit earlier yeah. or excusing yourself from other things, you know, just giving yourself a bit of me time. Mm. And if you're having a crappy day, be kind to yourself. And actually, if you really, really can't do it and it's the worst thing, it feels like the worst thing, just don't do it then. Um, yeah. And I think that being kind to myself has actually been probably the first time in my family life and my career where I've gone, do you know what? My body is trying to crumble against me. It's now time for me to settle, yeah. work out, and then when I'm ready, I'll be up and, and going again. It's just, it's it's a really, really um, big transitional time. But the thing is, not everybody woman, um, not every woman goes through it in this um, extent. Um, Absolutely. I spoke to um, some women on a road, uh, start again. I, was, I spoke to some women on um, a yoga retreat um, just recently and one of the ladies was saying, oh, um, I wonder what your um, symptoms are for because I didn't go through that. Maybe it's because you're grieving your mum because um, I lost mum nearly a year ago. And I was mm -hmm. like, wow, okay, they, they could be heightened um, senses because of that, absolutely. And then some other woman just said, no, 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 my sister had no symptoms and I had them all. So we've got to remember that everybody's journey is completely different as well. And all this stuff that might sound scary, you know, for my symptoms, you know, you might not get them. Um, and also um, age-wise as well, you know, some women are, you know, under 30, um, and some women don't feel anything until they're 53, you know. So, um, yeah, it's just um, understanding and, and, and looking at yourself and getting as much information as possible, I think. Yeah, it's about really listening to your body, isn't it? And being in tune with what's going on, what feels different. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, maybe just taking a little bit of a note of it, because like you said, the severity of symptoms vary woman to woman. And yeah. The order that you might get them, you know, over time will will change. Um, so, yeah, it's recognising that, oh, this could actually be perimenopause. Yeah. Uh, and, yeah, and seeking help. I think it's quite interesting you asking about food as well. So exercise, mm. I've kind of taken it down a notch and done some things that make me feel nice. I mean, yeah. um, I know that I should be doing weight training at the moment, but I've got too much going on. So I'm going to start that once the show is settled. Yeah. And then get to the gym I'll worry about it then you know pace myself um but I'm actually working we're doing um 42nd street and I'm work, working with um the lovely um Samantha Janice um and because she's in my age bracket we're all going through the same thing and my director is going through the same thing we're going how are you doing today yeah the brain fog's there how are you doing have you done your walking you know and it's so lovely to have a sisterhood of people to talk to but yeah. Samantha was also talking about um what she's done um sort of food wise as well to help and she was like protein 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 yes. so um I, I love eggs, so I'm a big egg fan. So that's um, a very stable part of my diet. I mean, a lot more leaves now, a lot more greens. Um, trying to stay away from the carbs, but also I'm treating myself to carbs as well. Yeah. You know, um, I, I do have um, sweet cravings and salt cravings at the moment as well that I'm trying to figure out the best way to um, work around those. But um, so my salt cravings, I'm doing Himalayan salt, apple cider vinegar and a little bit of olive oil or anything with omega-3 because that's good for us too. Yes. With a bowl of leaves and maybe some scrambled egg or poached eggs on the side. That's a really quick, easy thing for me to do on tour when I don't have like all the facilities I do at home. Yeah. Um, and uh, as, as again, because I'm away from home, picking up chicken is nice and easy. Mm -hmm. um, and then alcohol as well, because it's a very social job. Yeah, um, so we do, and everyone's like, okay, after the show, you know, we're all running high on adrenaline, and um, uh, Samantha and I are going for the vodka now rather than a wine. Ah, <laughs> yeah, Vod vodka, well. vodka, uh, uh, soda water, and lime is what we should be having. <laughs> you know, not so many, 
But um, if we're going to join in and partake, which we will, you know, let's be honest, um, yeah. that's kind of the way that we're kind of managing it for that side of things. <laughs> wonderful yeah and your your um sensitivity to alcohol you're finding it harder to recover the next day like being I, mean, I, I think that's been happening for quite a few years now <laughs> and I don't know whether that's menopause or just getting older but I think one thing that um happens with alcohol is the flushing yes so um because um it depends on what I'm drinking as well which is quite interesting so I have rosacea anyway so if I um what you would say blush or mm. if you're embarrassed that whole um flushing that you get from those sort of emotions I get heightened because I have rosacea yes um, so um the alcohol flush was quite interesting um and literally I was going to go to the theatre with Nana and her mates and uh, I was taking a fan with me because I knew that we were going to have some wine but my goodness I was just like wow <laughs> So, so yeah, I think um, personally for me, vodka doesn't make me flush so much. Ah, uh-huh. yeah, <laughs> yeah. It, it's it's a histamine tolerance thing. So a lot of women find it's like red wine is the worst culprit. Okay. Um. So yeah, switching for a for a a spirit is definitely helpful. I've I've heard. Yeah, I mean, there are so many people who also say, you know, change your diet, you know, stop mm-hmm. drinking, do this, that and the other. And it's like, well, what do we have left that's fun anymore? So yeah. I think it's all in moderation. Um and just, you know, find your poison somewhere else. <laughs> and yeah. you know, we've still got to have joy, even though our bodies are trying to change and do all these things to ourselves. You know, we've still got to find joy. Yeah, I definitely preach an 80-20 rule anyway to like my clients and so on, because like you said, you still need to find joy in something and you don't want to be in a social situation where you're just like, nah, I'm not I'm not doing that. And it just sets the dynamics off wrongly, doesn't it? It's just like, well, well yeah, I, I think it's, a, it's down to the individual. But, um, you know, I like um, to relax with a drink after a show because, you know, you've been so up high. Um, and I think you become more relaxed, your inhibitions are lower, you have a laugh, and then it kind of knocks you out for going to sleep as well. And sleep, that's another thing, isn't it? Yes. So my sleep journey, um, it hasn't been terrible. I know friends who have had it really, really badly with the um, night flushes. Mm. My um, my inner uh, thermometer... Um, is definitely um, uh, confused at the moment, um, yeah. and um, not. I don't get um, hot flushes, but I've been waking up literally burning up like lava. Yeah. Um, and my poor husband, you know, trying to kick me away. <laughs> get, get away from me. Um, but yeah, I find that um, I was always a very cold person, and I'd have to wear like multiple jumpers and jackets and socks in bed and things like that. And now I'm literally, you know, the the least possible, and you know, yeah. cover off, cover on, cover off, cover on in the night. So that's fun. Um, but I'm trying to take um, magnesium and zinc before I go to bed. Yeah, because um, that apparently is a help with um, sleep aid and um, also recovery of your muscles and things like that. So that seems absolutely. to be quite good. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, it is. It's very hormonal. And um, you know, having like just becoming a little ready here, aren't you? <laughs> I'm literally, I mean, I don't know what I'm coming dressed as, but to work, I'm usually like wearing cycling shorts and a blazer. <laughs> I mean that's a look isn't it but that's what I kind of feel like I need you know you need a little bit of hair circulating and my legs out yeah. absolutely <laughs> it's leading isn't it so you can literally if you are having like Get it off if you a flushy it. moment you yeah. can just like take take a layer off and you still look half decent at least presentable <laughs> yeah all the layers all the natural fibers yeah yeah <laughs> brilliant <laughs> So, um, Faye, what what advice would you give to other women who are maybe about to kind of sit sit on the journey of perimen- being perimenopausal or are currently going through it at the moment? So um, I would definitely say that Davina's um, menopausing book is a must read. Yeah. Um, there's so much information. And I think what I really found endearing was the um, letters that real people have sent in yes. telling them about their symptoms and they were so so different um 
I would um, highly recommend speaking to your partners and your children openly about it. Um, and don't feel embarrassed and ashamed because now we are in this generation. We're all talking about it. Thank heavens. Yes. Um, and um, do speak to your doctor um, and don't let your doctor fob you off and say that it's something that all women go through. Um, and I say that because um, if you're a diabetic, um, mm. you're provided with insulin. If you're perimenopausal and you're losing estrogen it's um, a drug that's on the market and available to us talk to your doctor um, because I would say the benefits that I've experienced are huge I've gone back to work with confidence um, and um, the journey towards the actual menopause when it all finishes that is going to be a light at the end of the tunnel I'm excited to get to that moment where I give zero and yeah. I'm in my zero era and it's going to be something that I'm going to um, look forward to and just um, speak to all my friends about this and conversation, conversation, conversation. Speak to all of the women, all of the girls, all of the people who have symptoms, who don't sim don't who have symptoms as well. Um, yeah. Because um, spreading the word about this, I think, is imperative because you shouldn't have to go through this um in any sort of pain because we have those resources available to us you know you don't have to have a, a a badge to say you did it without any help you know let's do this comfortably let's live our best lives and let's talk about it wonderful Faye thank you thank you so much I know you're a busy lady so we appreciate you coming uh coming on I know you're in the middle of rehearsals, right? <laughs> yeah, we open officially on Tuesday at 42nd Street. We're going to be going around the whole of the UK, which is really exciting. Um, the feedback so far has been brilliant. Um, and uh, yeah, it's just so lovely to be back in control, back at work. Absolutely. Well, we'll look forward to seeing you on tour. I'm sure. So lovely to speak to you. Thank you so much for having me on. Thank you so much, Bea. Speak soon. Thank you. Thank you for tuning in to Menopause Unplugged. I hope you find the conversation to be informative, enlightening and empowering. Remember, menopause is a natural part of a woman's life journey, but it doesn't have to be a lonely one. Whether you're experiencing perimenopause or menopause, my menopause coaching program can provide reassurance and guidance. Please do reach out to me through my contact details on the show description. And until next time, take care.